Hey guys, it's Bradley Bush again with another algebra video for you. Today we're going to talk about condensing logarithms. I have another video for expanding logarithms if you want to check that out in my algebra playlist. Today our to-do list is only four items and I think it'll go fairly quickly. We'll discuss some properties of logarithms because we can't really understand how to condense them unless we know the rules for condensing them. Then we'll have a few examples, three short examples, and I'll do three longer examples. And then I'll have a summary, just kind of a snapshot of the rules that we're using so that if you wanted to take a picture or a screenshot or something, you can. So let's start. Properties of logarithms. Let's, uh, let's check these out. Um, the first property, I've just highlighted in yellow on the left hand side by the number one is called the product rule. It's called the product rule because we have inside the logarithm we have the product of two things. This can be extended to the product of more than two things but for here we'll just do the product of two things. Some important things to note are first the base b is the same everywhere. I've color coded things so you can see that the b is the same everywhere, the m is the same on both sides of the equation, and the n is the same on both sides of the equation. I should probably also make a note right here before I forget about um, the variables. So m, n, and b, um, and then there's this weird stuff going on right here. You're probably like, what is that? So this right here, it looks kind of like an e. It uh, stands for element of. I can spell element or in other words belongs to the set and then whatever follows so M N and B belong to the set or are elements of and the next item here the weird looking R stands for all real numbers and the positive superscript means just positive ones. So if you looked at the whole shebang right here, then it would mean, maybe we'll do it right here, positive real numbers. So M, N, and B are positive real numbers. The only other thing that's important is that B can't be equal to 1. And P, which will be used in property 3, is an element of the real numbers, as you can see here. So let's go back to what we were. Let's go back to our um, property one. So what we're saying here is you can move from the left side of the equivalency to the right side of the equivalency, or you can start from the left or the right side and move back to the left side. You can do you can go both ways. This is an equivalency to help you move from one side to the other, from the left to the right, or from the right to the left. When we're expanding, we're moving from the left to the right, and when we're condensing, we're moving from the right to the left. So maybe I should be writing that down here. This is expand, and this is condense. So we're going to be condensing. So our example here is log base 4 of 2 plus log base 4 of 5, and we're supposed to condense that. So we can see that they fit. We see all of the little... Um, we see it fits the property because we have the B here and here. Um, we have an M that is right here. The 2 is the M and the 5 is the N. So we see all the properties. We sell the parts of the property. So we literally just follow it. We're going to put M times N in the middle 
inside the log and we'll keep the same base. And uh, one thing that's important also to note is that when you're condensing, you must first look at the bases of the two of them because they have to be the same. Notice on the rule, they're both base B. If those bases aren't the same, you can't condense it. So the base is the same. Let's condense. So this gives us log base 4 of 2 plus, we'll just write it out so we know what we're coming from, where, where we're coming from, base 4 of 5. And when we condense it, we have a single log with the same base, and we have the 2 times 5. So you could finish right there. You could also keep the 2, or multiply the 2 and the 5 together and get 10. Um, we'll just leave it there so you can see the parts. Not too bad, right? How about the next rule here? Let's do the quotient. The quotient rule um, is called the quotient rule because inside of the log you have a quotient. In other words, you have two things that are in a ratio, meaning one divided by the other. So we have an M and an N. Again, in our rule, you can go from the right to the left in our equivalency or from the left to the right, whichever way you need according to the situation you're in. We're condensing, so we're moving from the right to the left. So let's identify our parts here. Um, we need the B, and notice the base is the same on both of them, so we're good. We can actually condense this. And uh, if we identify the M, the M is the input in the first logarithm. The N is the input in the second logarithm, so we're good to go. Uh, let's condense. So log base 4 of 2 minus log base 4 of 5, that can be rewritten or condensed into a single log base 4 of the first input from the log 2 divided by the second input, which is 5. And that's it. We're done. Not, not too bad, right? Let's try the power rule. So the power rule, the power rule is the power rule because it's called the power rule because we have a power here that we deal with. And the power rule tells us that that power rule can come out, that power can come out in front. So again, if we are moving from left to right, we're expanding. And if we're moving from right to left, we are condensing. And we want to condense. So we're going to need to see some number out front, which you can see there. And we'll think, hey, that number is going to be put right back up on, that is a terrible arrow, right back up as an exponent. So let's see what we have in our example. Um, our example is 5 times log base 4 of 2. So good news for us, we see um, a constant out front, and that constant out front is probably what we need to go back up top. So it's 5, we're going to plop it back up here as the exponent. And again, we're moving from the right of the equivalency to the left of the equivalency. So we have log base 4 of 2 to the fifth power. And we're done. We've condensed it. That's not bad, right? It's not bad at all. So now let's use those three rules to condense logs that are a little bit more difficult. They're not terribly difficult, but they're more difficult than we have. 
So let's give us ourselves some more room here. Let's start out with our first one. Um, first, we check, do we have the same base on these two? We do, so that's a good thing. We can use one of our equivalencies. The second thing is, what is the sign in between the two logs? If it's a plus, that means we're going to use the product rule. If it's a minus, we're going to use the quotient rule. Here it's a plus. So in our heads, we're thinking we're probably going to be using the product rule. And we have the same base, which is perfect. We have an M, which is here, and we have an N here. So we can just use our rule. We can say log base 4 of 2 plus log base 4 of 32 is the same thing as log base 4 of 2 times 32. What is 2 times 32? 2 times 32 is 64. Can we simplify this any further? My guess is we can, because what question is this asking? And if you are wondering what I'm saying when I say, what question is this asking, check out my video on computing logarithms in my algebra playlist, because it goes over multiple examples of this. So this is actually asking us, this logarithm is asking us, 4 to the what power is 60? Four. four to what power is 64? Four times four gives us 16 times four is 63. So we can actually compute this log without leaving it like that and without using the calculator. We get three. We're done. We've finished our product rule. Check. Move on to the next one. Condense this one. Let's give ourselves again a little more room. As I look at it, the first thing I look for, again, is the base. Notice there isn't anything there. So if there isn't anything there, we know that we're dealing with a common log, and that is base 10. So we're good. They both are the common log. So that checks out. The second thing is we're looking at what is the sign in between these two logs. And we see that it's a negative. So in our head, we're thinking we're probably going to be using the quotient rule. So we look at our base. They are both the same base. It's 10. And we need and m, which is the first, the input of the first logarithm, and we need an n, which is the input of the second. So we're set. We have everything we need to know. Now let's condense. So log of 4x minus 3 minus log of just x gives us log, so we keep the same base, so it'll just be base 10. So we don't need to write anything. And the m goes in the top, so 4x minus 3. And the n goes in the bottom, which is just x. And we're done. So that wasn't bad at all either. Should we see how this next one goes? Yeah, this one looks a little bit more difficult. Let's see. What are the different parts here that we need to think about um, to know what rules we might be using? So we have 
something here that could probably go up top, a constant out front that could go up top to 5. We could use the parable to bring that up. We have some negatives here in between the second, first and second terms and the second and third term. Those we could probably factor out. We could factor these out. And then we'd have a plus in there. Um, so that's going to help us. We'll probably use both the, so we'll make a list of these. We'll use the product rule. We're guessing. Um, we'll probably also use the quotient rule because we see negatives. And because we have some constants out in front, and by the way, there's another constant that I didn't talk about there. That probably will come out here eventually. So we've got a lot of stuff going on here. So let's write that down. And the power rule. So let's start. Let's start by condensing, uh, pulling out the negative first, and we can condense. So let's pull out the negative. Uh, that gives us one third, five times the ln of x plus six minus uh, that. Let's put a color change here, so you, we remember that we have a negative that's out there. Um, the natural log of x plus the natural log of x squared minus 25. And then we've got our closing parenthesis that's orange. There, we've pulled out, we've factored out that negative. We pulled it out. So if you notice, if you distributed it back through, you get what we have above. So all we did is factor out that negative. Now um, we can see that we can condense the right hand side here. And what rule are we going to use? We're going to use the product rule because we see a plus there. And we know that they're both LNs, so we're good. They've got the same base, base E. So let's condense that. The rest of this, we're just going to carry down. 5 ln of x plus 6 minus, and uh, we will have now ln of x times x squared minus 25. Parenthesis, parenthesis, one more parenthesis. And then there we go. Any other product rules? I don't see any others. So product rule done. Um, let's deal with now the negative in the middle. You see the negative in the middle? Uh, we notice that we have an ln here, an ln here. So we can condense them. Oh, you know what? I need to do one thing before that. I've got to use the power rule really quickly. Because this little bob needs to come out and come up here. So let's do that. <laughs> little bob. That was a technical term. Yes, little bob. Five comes up. We just use the power rule, and we have negative ln of x times x squared minus 25. I've got to make sure I get all my parentheses. Awesome. So now let's use, uh, we use the power rule once. So let's check it. And let's use the quotient rule now because, again, we have the negative there. One third stays out front. And we have 
ln of x plus 6 to the fifth power divided by ln, whoops, sorry, divided by x times x squared minus 25. Almost done. We use the quotient rule. Um, good job. One last step. One final step, and that step is to get rid of this one third. We use the power rule to bring that one third back up top. Right there. So let's do it. We have the ln of x plus 6 to the fifth power and x times x squared minus 25. And we have one third up in the power. So we could we could say right there that we're done. Um, we could put a box around that and say finished. We could also rewrite that. We know that fractional exponents are also radicals. So if you wanted to, uh, for some reason, you could also do that. So you could have the cube root here of, I should probably put, I should probably write what's inside the cube root first. Otherwise, it doesn't look very good because I never end up making my cube roots big enough. x times x squared minus 25. Now I can make my cube root. And our ln is all of that. So we could do either of those two whichever you prefer. That was a little more involved, wasn't it? Uh, let's put one more check mark for the power rule. That was a little more involved than the other ones we've done, uh, but it was doable if we just went step by step. A note here, um, oftentimes the quotient rule takes precedent over the product rule and the product rule takes precedent over the power rule. So just in case that is helpful as you're going through Let's look at the summary now. These are just three rules we dealt with. The product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule. That's it. Thanks for watching.